Okay, I've graphed the uh, parametric equation on Desmos uh, using the letter T instead of theta. So he, the, the red graph is actually the same as the graph in rectangular coordinates uh, as this ellipse right here. That ellipse has a center at 2, negative 5. And the value of A is the square root of 16, which is 4, which means the distance from the center of the ellipse to one of the vertices along the horizontal axis is four. So actually this is as an X coordinate of negative two and another X coordinate of six. So that's the answer here for the interval that X takes on. The question is how do we get from here to here? And that's a technique that we usually use when we have parametric equations and we want to get it into rectangular coordinates. And the technique is usually to solve for t for in one of the equations and then substitute into the other one. So if I solve this first equation for t, I'm going to get x minus 2 divided by 4 equals the cosine of t. So t equals the inverse cosine of x minus 2 over 4. That is, t is an angle that has a cosine of x minus 2 over 4. To help you visualize that, we could do this. We could say this is our angle t right here, or theta. And this is x minus 2. The hypotenuse is 4, so the cosine of t is x minus 2 over 4. But in this right triangle, this side by the Pythagorean theorem will be the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus this leg squared. So it would be 16 minus x minus 2, the or minus the quantity x minus 2 squared. So that's the length of this leg right here. So now when I substitute into this other equation, y equals 2 times the sine of whatever t is. Well, t is opposite over hypotenuse. So for right here, I can say the square root of 16. And while I'm at it, I'll remove the parentheses, minus x squared. I would get a minus 4x if I squared this quantity, but I'm taking the opposite. And then I would get a plus 4. I'm taking the opposite, minus 4. That's all over 4. So this expression right here is the sine of t. And then I have this minus 5. This 2 divides into the 4 twice. I'd like to get rid of that radical. So I'm going to uh, add 5, and then multiply by 2, and that will give me the square root of this mess, which is 12 minus x squared plus 4x. And if I square both sides, I get, well, this will be 2y plus 5 plus 10, the quantity squared, that'll be 4y squared. Uh, 2y plus 10, don't, so plus 40y plus 100. And when I remove square this side, I'll get minus x squared plus 4x plus 12. I'm going to Everything, the variables on the left side, x squared minus 4x plus 4y squared plus 4y. I'm going to write that as 4 times the quantity y squared plus 10y. I'm leaving a placeholder here. You'll see y in a second. Equals, uh, it looks like negative 88. If I move the subtract 100 from both sides. Now what I'm going to do is complete the square. And so to complete the square here, half of b is negative 2 squared is 4. If I add 4 to this side, I got to add 4 to this side. 
And here, half of 10 is 5. 5 squared is 25. If I put a 25 in here, I've really added 100 to the left side, so I have to add 100 over here. Now I write each perfect square trinomial as a binomial squared. So it'd be y plus 5. I still have this 4 out here. Equals, let's see, negative 84 plus 100 is 16. To get into the desired form, I divide every term by 16. Getting a little sloppy here. And this will be y plus 5, the quantity squared. Four goes into the 16 that I divided by, leaving a four in the denominator equals one. There's your equation of an ellipse with center at two negative five, major axis, uh, horizontal, and uh, the other axis, vertical. Okay, hope that helped.